This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast to contain spoilers, but honestly, if you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, we could give you a blow-by-blow of this movie and you'd probably just fall asleep. Let us begin. The power of the dog. The power of the dog. I'm glad you started it out that way because we we actually didn't decide which movie we were going to discuss. As That's we, how I was going to tip my hand. Yeah, I was, I was like, uh-oh. I don't, we, we like to say the movie name together and I don't know what's coming. And then I was like, okay, now I know. This is my favorite thing about the power of the dog. Uh, I, I have like a, this, it's probably like a tick or something, but I like to just like swap in letters for words, you know? Yeah. Which be like, hey, what time are we record in the P or pa- whatever. And like, you'll power know. Power of the D. No matter what you do with this movie, it's kind of cute. The P of the dog. The P of the dog or the power of the D. <laughs> That's true. Power of the D is definitely funnier, right? Yes, yeah. All right, so those are the positives. Um, <laughs> all right, and that's where it ends. No, just kidding. There are some good things about this movie. This no longer, no longer the overwhelming favorite to win best Thank picture. Thank God. However, the favorite to win best picture, the overwhelming favorite to win best director. Twelve Oscar nominations: Best Picture, Best Actor, Benedict Cumberbatch, Best Director, Jane Campion, Best Supporting Actor, Jesse Plemons, Best Supporting Actor, Cody Smith McPhee, Best Supporting Actress, Kirsten Dunst, Best Adapted Screenplay, Jane Campion, Best Cinematography, Best Original Score, Johnny Greenwood, Best Production Design, Best Film Editing, Best Sound. This is like the movie of this Oscar season, and we've now seen it twice, right? Yes, seen it twice. It is the movie that I will jump in front of traffic if it wins Best Picture. I, I, I'm pretty close to that. It, it shouldn't be nominated for Best Picture. Absolutely no. shouldn't. And, like, the, there are movies in this group that you're like, Don't Look Up was made to be like the 8th, ninth, or 10th best film nominated yeah. in a given year. This movie has... No business being nominated for an award. It is, it takes interesting things. We're going to talk about uh, Deep Water in the regular episode. It takes, Deep Water takes some like very interesting things and somehow makes them extremely boring and uneventful. Yeah. This is like that if there weren't interesting things. <laughs> yeah, there aren't, there is not much it's of an so interesting uninteresting. thing. so uninteresting. Like if somebody asked me what this movie is about, it'd be very hard to like come up with something that defines the movie. So we were talking about uh, in the main episode this week, we're going to do alternate titles for um, for the best picture nominees. I thought of that while watching this. You know what the alternate title for this movie is? Uh, Just like asshole brother. Man injures hand. (laughs) That's what happens. Yeah, that's uh, what happens in this movie. So, I mean, like, so if you haven't seen it, uh, it's Mazel Tov. Yeah, right. Congratulations. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Jesse Plemons are a pair of brothers. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, presumably the older brother, yeah. is big time asshole. He's just a He's miserable guy who dick. who yeah. just like needs to belittle everybody to feel good about himself or like just even to like feel powerful. And that's the entire movie. It's just him being a dickhead. Yeah. He's a dickhead. Uh, other people have like things that happen in their life. Like Rose, Kirsten Dunst's character is, uh, she's a widow, correct? Yes. Yeah. She's a widow. Um, she, she's a suicide widow. Oh, that's right, right. She's So she's got some troubles in her life. She's got some trouble with the bottle and everything. Uh, but the main thing is, like, these this one guy's a dick, and uh, he fucks up his hand. Yes. Well, I mean, he, he causes problems for, like, everybody else. Then they're like, oh, also, he's gay. Uh, keep an eye on that hand, though. He's... Uh, He's got. He's a, was there? Uh, it, was that the? Uh, I didn't necessarily know if he was gay, but that's the uh, the thing that I got. That's like the thing that I picked up on when he had like the magazines. So that's what I. That's what I assumed. And the whole uh, Bronco Joe. Is that the Bronco guy? Bronco Henry. Bronco Henry. Yeah. Yeah. I was confusing him with uh, Mocha Joe. Oh, that's famously right. Famously, is uh, in a a much more interesting character. Some I I would uh, I would nominate. Mocha Joe episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm for an Academy <laughs> Award before I would nominate this movie, but I I think that's what you're uh, to deduce. Maybe I was being it would explain uh, a lot. Maybe I was being a little Freudian and yes. like turning everything into sex. But well, I mean, it would explain a lot. Explain why he's so miserable because he can't like be himself. Yeah, and I I think that the red herring in this film is Call Me by Your Name. Yeah, that he he's going to like. They think that they're like leading you down the like. Wait a second, how old is this kid? Like, should like this this seems inappropriate. Uh, 
But no, it's mainly he's got uh, he's got like a gash on his hand, and uh, it's from a splinter. He thinks it's yeah, he's got a messed up hand, and the kids like, yo, you called me the you and your boys called me the f word, yeah, and you got a gash on your hand. I can kill you so easily these days. <laughs> this is like the these these ripe conditions, and you wait you you work with animals. This is going to be the easiest. And you don't thing wear in gloves. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't raw dog the rawhide. Yeah, you can't raw dog the rawhide. Uh, if you're a scene of, uh, or if you're a fan of movies treating animals right, this is not the movie for you. There's a scene of Benedict Cumberbatch beating a horse, which is very uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, and then there's a uh, at least one scene of him castrating uh, a cow, and then there's a scene of. There's two scenes of rabbits being killed. Yeah, I don't like the. Is it weird that like the most upsetting thing is the rabbits? Maybe because they're so small. I would say for me, it was the most upsetting thing was the horse being beaten. Yeah, that was like because I was like wondering during that scene, like how do you do this scene without yeah. actually like abusing an an animal because wouldn't, it looked very real. Wouldn't hate a little Adam McKay fourth wall breaking there. Yeah, Throw some like, text up there right, and like, like let us know. Yes. Who, what happens please and if everybody's okay um we want to say any good things about this movie like let's just get that out of the way i will sure. say uh benedict cumberbatch is amazing in this benedict movie. cumberbatch plays that character well uh everybody else i feel like didn't really have a chance at good characters like I rose think is, and dunce is pretty good yeah but they they take rose and george's characters like away for stretches so long that I at one point in the movie George just I thought George dies. Yeah, he disappears for like forty five minutes. They change from one uh there's what, like seven acts or something in this this film. Something like there's that. There's a bunch of acts. Too many. And when they switch to one of them, you're a few minutes into it and you're like, is George presumed dead? He like goes into town and isn't heard from for like fifty minutes. Yeah. So I don't know what George is up to. But um yeah, the, those those characters don't have a I know what you're saying. Like, they develop Rose's character more, but ultimately wasn't wowed there. Didn't Don't blame Kirsten Dunst for it. Uh, good performance from Benedict Cumberbatch. I did think the kid, Cody Smith McPhee, very good. was good. Uh, it's got a very good score. Johnny Greenwood. He, Thomas and McKenzie, big time waste. Huge waste. That's, yeah. Thomas and McKenzie is in this movie, and I think we're like bordering on like standing Thomas and McKenzie. Yeah, she's great. Big time star. In the making, maybe, yeah. but like already a star. Uh, she was in this movie. I forgot about it. And then when she came, when I saw her in the second watch, I was like, oh, I don't remember this. Maybe this will like make me think higher of the movie. No, it didn't because she didn't really do anything. Yeah, you're going to want uh, Last Night in Soho if you want your Mackenzie fix this year or listen to uh, Howmouth's latest album. That's right. For there is a track called Mackenzie that... I think this is the first movie that I can remember in a long time where I think that like... One of the performances is incredible, and I just dislike the movie so much. I feel like we've had that discussion about movies before, but I can't I, – n- none come to mind. I think there's been movies where I've been like, the performance is amazing. I'm not crazy about the movie. Yeah. I don't think that I've ever like actively disliked a movie as much as this one while also saying that like this person did an incredible job. I also don't even go as far as like incredible with... Um, I think Cumberbatch was like pretty in- like amazing. I thought, I thought that he was good and worthy of being... He's So he's the second favorite for best actor. Will Smith is the heavy favorite. And... I think that, like, both of those performances are, like, I know how good Will Smith is. I know how good Benedict Cumberbatch is. So, like, I I wasn't stunned by either of them because it's just both are, like, great actors turning in really good performances. I wasn't blown away by really anything other than, like, at points, maybe just because I needed something else to focus on, at points, I was quite taken with the score, which probably won't win. Score, very good. Cinematography, very good as well. Cinematography, uh, very good. Also, actually, this isn't like score one for these people, but it at least makes them feel seen. Uh, shitty dudes who just sit around playing guitar all day. Cumberbatch does that with his banjo. Banjo, yeah. He just kind of sits around all day being mean to people, picks up his guitar, noodles for a little bit, banjo in this case, puts it back down. Any Any dude who plays guitar... Knows pretty, that feeling. Pretty haunting scene of uh, of Kirsten Dunst playing the piano downstairs, him playing the banjo upstairs. Yeah. Same song. That was a that was a pretty cool scene. 
It was a cool scene, it was creepy but I was as like, fuck. yo, you're such a dick. So she's trying to learn piano, and she's learning a piece, and she's practicing it, and he just plays it in unison a million times better than her, yeah. and is like, that, he isn't even saying anything. And then she like looks up, and he's like just there. Yeah, they find it. some like pretty creative ways for him to just like psychologically torture. Yeah, that's all he does. They yeah. move in there, and he's just a dick to Peter. And a dick to Rose. And I'll tell you, I'm a little distracted by... So, like, the dynamic between the two brothers is... It's kind of uh, hell or high water-ish, where one is just trying to do the right thing, trying to keep himself put together for the most part. The other one's, like, like fucking wild defiantly card. Yeah. an asshole. Uh, so, Jesse Plemons' character is the brother of Phil. He plays... Uh, Plemons plays George. And his thing is, like, I'm going to try to be put together... And I, even for it being said a bajillion years ago, he just kind of speaks in a way that I even expected Cumberbatch's character to be like, shut up, man. You're just trying to sound like a like old-timey person. Yeah. Like, he'd walk in and he'd be like, why I ought to fetch supper or yeah. something. It's like, dude, you don't have to start it with why. None of the other characters are doing Nobody that. else talks like that. No. Yeah, you're right. He's like the only one. And Even like the governor. They invite the governor over who's supposed to be like the most like regal person in the yeah. town. And the, he's like, he's what like, up? Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and cover batch over in the corner being like, yeah, shut up, fatso. Yeah. He calls him fatso so many times. Yeah. He, I mean, I, I do not want to know. What Cumberbatch is, I would not want to watch a Benedict Cumberbatch reacts to, uh, what's it called? Uh, El Camino? Is Which, that the Breaking Bad movie? Yeah, what? Yeah. Because everyone was making oh, bad jokes about Jesse right, Plemons. Yeah, yeah, okay, right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. He would have, he would have <laughs> been uh, not nice. Um, Phil, by the way, did you watch The Sopranos? Yes. Phil is Vito when he sees, uh, the, when he sees Meadow's boyfriend, when Me- Meadow's boyfriend sees Vito blowing a dude, oh yeah, and then he like kind of like, he's like, okay, well, you're gonna have to be a part of my life now. Yeah, that's kind of what he does with uh, with Peter. Yeah, pretty much. It, which that happens after he sees him like bathing naked. Yeah, but is like finds the, his, like treasure is the chest assumption of... that he found like the the stash. Yeah, he finds I, his stash. Yeah, I guess that would be. Which like the stash wasn't clearly. A like a gay thing because no. there was like women in there too. Were they? Were there, there was like at least one woman. Interesting. But it was like a lot of like body sculpting, like men stuff too. Well, I mean, I could have told you before anything was shown that this was probably like a homosexual and homophobic person. Right. Like somebody who is like Given compensating. The, like, all of his, yeah. All he cares. Uh, not a good movie for. Uh, I forget what the term for it, but like the player pianos, are they like P, uh, the ones that play themselves? Yeah. Uh, what are they called? They're like P, uh, P, uh, something. Sure. I forget. They, uh, shit. You're I, the music guy here. I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find this in, uh, two seconds, but she's got one of those does rows and people come by. They get it going. They dance. They sing. Not not old Phil though. <laughs> He's Phil, not a fan. Phil screams at everybody about it. Uh, pianola. Okay. Pianola. Well, anyway, uh, so fucking he's being a dickhead. So what's his face kills him. Uh, Pete and when uh, what's his face walks in. Plemons walks in. Phil's lying on the bed, not doing too well. And he's just like, I shall arrange a doctor. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh, imagine if those are the last words you heard. <laughs> I. It was also like, you. You're obviously like rooting for this guy to die the entire movie because he's a horrible dude. Uh, he has like somewhat of a slight redemption arc at the end, but only because like I think that he's trying to protect his secret. I mean, he also he, he I think like, wants. A, a friend yeah and like sees the opportunity for that and is like like when what's his face says so pretty cool move from uh pretty cool move from rose who just gives away all of his rawhide because he likes making ropes doing all sorts of stuff with rawhide maybe he's like a dog chews on it 
You ever give your dogs rawhide? Yeah. Dogs love that. They sure do. So does this character, Phil. Rose doesn't love this character. Don't touch Phil, his rawhide. Because she's because he's a dick to her. So she just gives it all away. And he's mad. Peter's like, it's cool. I just found a dead uh, steer. So, I mean, I just I got some rawhide for you. <laughs> or a, a, a very diseased steer. And uh, but when he gives it to him, Phil's sincerely like, yo. I forget how he phrases it. He kind of gets into George mode, but he's he's like, "It's gonna be easy for you from now on." See, but he says it in like a he says like, "Oh, you're you're gonna be riding on easy street." But it's like a real like, "I'm gonna take care of you." This was a very nice thing. Yeah. Thank you. Little does he know. It just like just lousy with anthrax. <laughs> uh, yeah, and but I mean like. It is a very unsatisfactory, like, I've, I've seen, like, a lot of people saying, like, didn't like the movie, but the ending was pretty cool. And it was not really, like, it's, if you're going to spend that much time building up to this, like, this conclusion, it needs to be much more satisfactory than what it was. Yeah, it just it moves happens. in slow motion, and then they're, like... It moves in slow motion to get there, and then it's just there, and then it's just over. That's it. Right, and are we supposed to, is that supposed to be, like, a, a big twist yeah like, we saw right. we see peter find the the, like, the what dead do animal that he's doing and then starts like cutting yeah. him up and then says like hey i have some rawhide for you and you're like well it looked like that animal was in not amazing shape <laughs> yes and then they show they show him putting his hands into the water yeah. with it and everything and it's like when uh it's like in any movie, if they show something, if they show like a detail that normally they wouldn't uh, show, like in that episode of Friends, when they're going outside to watch the parade or something, and as they're walking out, one of them says like, "Got the keys," and then they go and it's like, "All right, there's going to be an issue with the keys because they." Why would they, they throw that in there? They wouldn't show you that, right? right. Or if uh, someone like a doctor is handing somebody a bottle of medicine or something, it's like, well, I guess that's the wrong bottle. What's the uh, like the term uh, like? Chekhov's gun or something. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Is that what that means? But it's like when you show it in like the at you show like a gun in like the first third or whatever. Like something's got to happen with it by the end by like the last third. Interesting. Uh, that was interesting. Not this movie. Yes, for sure. Not that. I'm sorry if I caused any confusion. We have to talk about Jane Campion being the overwhelming betting favorite for. For best uh, director, her – let me see. I have the odds right here. She won the uh, the SAG, Screen Actors Guild yep. Award, for it. And then said something that uh, was just – Shouldn't have said. Doused in white feminism. Yes. Uh, so she is minus 5,000 wow. to win best director. That's and crazy. I so strongly think, not even that she said something – Hopefully unintentionally racist, but not even based on that. This, why is this the best directed movie? I, I don't wa- understand. Netflix even had like a, fee- did you watch the thing? There was like a 20 minute thing on like. I didn't watch it, but I saw that they had like. On like her yes. making the movie. Yeah. And I watched it and I was like, she's clearly a good director, but she's not, they, they didn't do a good job with this movie. I saw right. this movie. She she put thought and care into everything like any director would. And she like really had a vision. But it was such a boring fucking vision. And the last the last thing that I want to do after finishing that movie is is spending another fucking 20 minutes with Power of the Dog. Yeah. Dude, it's, I, I, I don't get that. I do wonder what the, if there will be fallout uh, for her winning after just given given what she said if you guys th- didn't hear she like flippantly joked that uh her contenders Venus and Serena Williams with um King Richard don't have as <laughs> haven't had as difficult a path as she's had because she goes up against men and Venus and Serena Williams don't go up against men which a like uh, well, let's see. What do we go? A racist, B wrong, or A wrong, B racist? I would just say like C ignorant right, in like, many yeah. different categories. Right, <laughs> just like really, really, really um, ignorant. Yes, is the way of of putting it. And she's apologized, and I don't think that she. 
I, I'm not going to get inside her head, but that was a fucking stupid thing to, to and think. And there's been more noise about this movie than like any other movie, I think, leading up to this. I, I don't know. Don't Look Up has been, there's been a lot of noise around Don't mm-hmm. Look Up too. But like uh, Sam Elliott said that this movie was like, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said that it was like a steaming pile of garbage. Yeah. And you know what she called Sam Elliott? Like a fake cowboy. Uh, quote a bit of a bitch. <laughs> I do like that. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that that that's always a funny comeback. Yeah. Shout out Phoebe Bridgers. Uh, it is funny just when when somebody's just like, yeah, well, you're a bitch. You're being a bitch about this, <laughs> <Yeah>. man. <laughs> and honestly, like, I do think that Sam Elliott does take himself a little bit too seriously as like, I'm a real cowboy, and it's like, dude, you're <laughs> a fucking actor. Yeah. Chill out, bro. Yeah. But how come you have so much money? <laughs> right. Like I don't know. Like it doesn't. I don't know. Like if like, this guy I was saying like modern cowboys are poor, but like like you you live like you live on a if you're a cowboy you've got a ranch and like you're self sufficient and all these right. things. Right. Well, unless this guy is spending like one month out of his year filming one movie and the rest of the year is he's taking care of his land and like yeah. living off the land. I don't think he's like a, any real authority on on what's real cowboy shit and what's not. But I will say. I'm a big fan of westerns. I'm a huge western guy. Mm-hmm. I eat up cowboy shit. This did not do it for me in the least. Uh, this was not even the best cowboy western that was released on Netflix this year. I would say uh, The Harder They Fall is a much better movie than this is. Uh, it seems, though, that part of Sam Elliott's issue with the movie, he called it a piece of shit, Um is that it was is filmed in New Zealand, right? Portrayal of cowboys, though, that he see he he thought that it was like a bit homoerotic, it would seem. So I can't totally defend him there. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not defend that. I'm not defending yeah. him. I'm just saying that, like, it says, uh, they're all running around in chaps and no shirts. There's all these allusions to homosexuality throughout the fucking movie. As I mean, to which I think Jane Campion or anybody would be like, Yeah, yeah I know that's we made the point. It. Yeah, yeah. Like, we were, yeah, we were going for yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, uh, also, have you seen Brokeback Mountain, my guy? Yeah, he said that uh, he doesn't like that it was filmed in New Zealand uh, for Montana, saying, that fucking rubbed me the wrong way, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the interviewer here? I know. <laughs> but yeah, Sam Elliott. I'm in Sam Elliott's corner that this movie sucks, but not for the reasons that Sam Elliott thinks that it Agree. sucks. Agree. Uh, Campion said... I'm sorry. He was being a little bit of a B I T C H, and I'm sorry to say it, but he's not a cowboy. <laughs> he's an actor. All right. All right. Well, the score one redemption for Campion. Arc. There. Campion. Okay. Um, she said, uh, the West is a myth exposed. There's a lot of room on the range. I think it's a little bit sexist because you think about the number of amazing westerns that were made in Spain by Sergio Leone. I consider myself a creator, and I think he sees me. A woman or something lesser first, and I don't appreciate that. So um, those two got to figure some shit out. But be- that those. battle is more interesting than this movie. Yeah, and Campion. I mean, Campion wins that battle by yeah. She's kind a million of miles. Some she's like, right. There. She's like, uh, sir, I'm doing a good job, and you know what your problem is? Like that's she. She. She's. She's getting in there. Uh, yeah, shut up, Sam Elliott. Yeah, stop like, being how a do bitch. you fuck up complain? How do you fuck up calling this movie bad? <laughs> you know so how much material ways. you got to work with, dude? dude? We just did it for twenty five minutes. Like, uh, you got some material. Yeah. So the only thing, the only thing less impressive than the power of the dog is Sam, Sam Elliott's, Elliott's criticism of power of Sam the dog. Elliott, yeah, Sam Elliott's uh, strategy to gay dismantling. to New Zealand. I mean, if anything, like make it gay or add in like New Zealand stuff. Do do anything that would get because again, all we have to work with is man has injured hand. Yes. Give me anything else. Throw Sam Elliott in the movie. He'd be all pissed off. He'd be like, I just want everyone to know I'm not like the rest of these cowboys. <laughs> and Cumberbatch is like, I'm supposed to be the asshole. He just comes out of nowhere. He's like, This guy's gay for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Put your shirt on. You're a terrible cowboy. I'm a good cowboy. <laughs> 